Virat Kohli wasn't here. Neither was Mohammed Shami. And R. Ashwin, well, he was part-time. And yet India just poured a full warm pint of bitter onto the heads of the baseballers. This felt so different than all the other times that India has recently won at home. Most of them have been nearly pointless endeavours. Even when a good side like New Zealand turned up, what kind of chance did they have to beat India with Will Somerville as their second spinner? Teams have been turning up to be destroyed by this Indian side. And there were two reasons. One was that the pitchers often favoured the local side's incredible spin trio. That unless you happen to clone Bisham Beatty and Anil Kumble in your academy at home, chances are you weren't going to be able to compete with them. But much more importantly than that, India went into every game with five first-choice bowlers and some legends with the bat. They had everything that they needed to defeat any team in most places, but certainly at home. You'd be better off believing that ice cream would somehow refreeze itself than you would that you could take a test off India at home. This series has not been like that at all. All three tests have been played on fantastic pitches. Good for batting, good for seam, and good for spin. And India have been cobbling together a side from whatever players they could find a shirt with their name on. And of course, they ran into baseball, a concept that makes the most feeble and ill-equipped players run through Hyderabad like they are monstrous demons. That means that India has come back from 0-1 against the freshest vibes in cricket history without all their best players or helpful pitchers. And India didn't just beat England, they made them question their positivity. So if you need a VPN, go Nord. Use nordvpn.com forward slash Kimber to get a huge discount off your Nord VPN plan plus four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. Protect your computer like a cricketer protects its nether region with Nord VPN today. I put this up in case you need to remember what a full-strength Indian team would actually look like. The top three would be pretty much the same as they are now. But then things go very whiffy. India were planning on having Virat Kohli for this series, and then if not, at least towards the end. Neither of these things have occurred. They dropped Shreyas Iyer, but let's say that K.O. Rahul was picked instead. Well, of course, he got injured anyway and has missed some time solidifying their middle order. And of course, that shouldn't have mattered, but with no Rahane or Pajara, it meant that the entire thing was opened up in a way for a team to take advantage of them. Rishabh Pant is their first choice keeper, and on the current trajectory, he's looking like he could be at one of the greatest batters in Gloveman history. And they even had to drop their replacement, who was supposed to be a safe pair of hands. Ravi Jadeja missed one test and then played the first match with two legs and the last one with only one. He still got player of the match because, you know, Sir Ravi J. But they haven't got the most out of him. Akshar Patel wasn't as good as they hoped, so the man with the golden average was actually forced to wear the substitute bib. R. Ashwin is not bowled as well as he can, and he also had to go off and look after his mum for a little bit. And India didn't have their automatic number two pace bowler, Mohamed Shami. This meant for the second draft they had to draft in another seamer who is not quite suited to the conditions. Plus, it also meant that Ashwin's injury really exposed a potential issue as England just kept going after Siraj. And I just want to bring this up. Australia failed to win two series at home during their 10-year run of professional aggression from 1995 to 05. One was a small series against New Zealand where there was a bunch of draws, and the other one was when India toured and Australia didn't have Warner McGrath. The point being, when you lose this many players or have this kind of run, you're not really supposed to win no matter how good you are. Now, of course, this current win is nothing like what India did with net bowlers and guys they found in their couch cushions for 2020-21 in Australia. But that doesn't make this nothing. England are hard to play. Going up against baseball is like trying to catch an oiled up ferret on ice skates. Even if you grab them, chances are they hurt you. I mean, India looked genuinely confused at Oli Post batting in the first test. And at times in this series, they've walked straight into England's plans when they've been batting. And sure, the English system is largely alpha male posturing partnered with hippie free love. At times, it's less of a tactical masterclass and more of a just do what feels good kind of vibe. So them winning the first match in a series that even tested their positivity privately meant that some of those who had like 1% of doubt left in them now fully believed. How could you watch Tom Hartley destroy Indian batters and not think that Baz and Ben could convert a popcorn seller into prime Imran Khan? Do you believe? Ken Oath. Yes, India was still at home with Rohit, Bumrah and Ashwin, but it didn't feel the same. 
And the exciting thing is that a lot of this came from the newer players. Yes, Boomer did well and Jadeja dragged his hamstring with him, but Rohit and Ashwin have barely had an impact on this series. The key player in this match was Joe Swell, who has not yet played 10 matches and yet has more double hundreds than Mark Waugh. At the crease, he looks like the future, an Indian who bats goofy-footed, slogs pace, destroys spin, can block and attack. You are only reminded of how young he is when he takes off his helmet and suddenly you're looking at the love interest from a tween movie. Dhruv Jarrell is clearly not the finished article just yet, especially with his keeping. But watching him bat, it just looks like he has an awfully good future ahead of him. He's all moving in the right direction, and he seems to really understand his own game, and his keeping actually got better as the match went on. His innings really helped India get on top in this game. Cool Deep was on the scrap heat not that long ago, and with India having so much talent, you could see how a player like him could be forgotten or just not fight his way back in. But he worked on everything he did to improve as a player, and when Jadeja, Ashwin and Aksha have all had their own issues in this series, Cool Deep has stood up. Whether it is just by being different and getting Duckett to slice a shocker of a ball to a fielder, or getting much better wickets like he did in the last game, Cool Deep has managed to keep the pressure on. And that's not a small thing because England has tried to hit him out of the series and he is still here. The same pretty much goes for Mohamed Siraj, who, when he has a bad session of bowling, people forget that he averages 28 across quite a few matches now. Yes, he can be a spree wicket taker and that can be annoying when he's reloading, but at his best, he ends innings. England started off this third match trying to finish him completely and they ended this game not really scoring off him much at all. And then you have Safras Khan, a player who became known as the RCB curse in the IPL, who changed his legacy by making 100 every time he saw a red ball, and then had to sit back in a queue with Prithvi Shaw and Gill and Ayer and Joswal and, and whatever other potential stars India had. Not to mention fighting the perception over his own body. And when he finally gets in the team, he's part of an incredibly inexperienced lineup and then just eases himself into a couple of 50s, and you need to remember that England bowlers are still yet to dismiss him. In fact, the only spinner who troubled him this test was Ravi Jadeja. At the start of this series, if you had Kuldeep Yadav, Dhruv Jarel, and Safras Khan as three of the most important players for India in a must-win match, your friends would have made you get a piss test. And things at home have been so easy for India that this series has just been fun because that hasn't happened. This Indian team has been made to work from behind against the vibe train and with all sorts of obstacles in their way. Without R. Ashwin and Ravi Jadeja all the time, or Kohli and Shami at all, India beat England by 434 runs. It is hard to stay positive when you've had the 8th biggest loss in terms of runs ever. But perhaps more importantly, this team of non-first choice players inflicted Basball's biggest issue yet, a moral loss. England were bowled out for 122. Fine, if you're going to attack, they understand sometimes it's not going to work. But scoring it barely 3 runs and over. Fellas, your strike rate took one hell of a beating. Thanks to the kind folks at FlexiSpot for looking after my office and my butt by sending me their E7 Pro desk that save your favorite desk heights at a touch of a button. You don't have to crank anything. This thing just finds the height that you like and you can work. And their BS12 Pro chair that supports my posterior while I'm recording, well, this ad and all my shows. If you need great desks, especially ones that change heights or the best quality chairs, head on over to FlexiSpot today.